Hello and welcome to Python for Everybody. My name is Charles Severance and I'm the author of the book and the teacher of this class. Uh, in this particular session, we are going to do um, exercise 6.5 from the textbook. Uh, it's, a, it's an exercise in parsing text strings. And so the, the basic idea is, is we're gonna see strings um, of, of various kinds and various lengths and we're gonna wanna extract pieces of them, okay? And so the idea is to somehow get this part out and then convert it to a floating point number. This is a proxy for later things where we're actually reading files or reading stuff off the internet, but parsing strings is an important thing for us to do, okay? And, and so let's take a look at a couple of different ways to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go bring up our atom and I've got it open nicely to uh, the right spot here, and I'm going to make a new folder. Hopefully by now you're finding Adam, uh, EX0605. Uh, Adam, or whatever your program or editor is, is sort of a powerful, um, a powerful tool. I'll, I'll close this one. File, new file. A powerful tool that lets you sort of save a lot of keystrokes, etc., etc. Print, uh, exercise, 6.5, just for yucks. X, R, size, and then file save as. And again, until I save it, it's not gonna have the pretty colors. I'm gonna save it in 605, X06, oops, 605.py. And now it has the pretty colors. And here I am. Now, I've been doing these, and so now I'm actually already in a directory. So let me show you how to do relative directory. So, so I'm in this path right here, and I can use, both in Windows and in Mac and in Linux, I can use the command cd dot dot. That sort of thinks of the one before, the one that came before. And so now I'm up one directory. And if I do an ls, I will see that this new EX0605 that I just created in this directory from Adam is already there. CD EX0605. In the next chapter, we'll be talking about files. And this is where you really need to know this concept of folders and files. So LS, and I'm going to run Python 3 EX0605.py. There we go. Exercise 6.5. So we're sort of in the right spot. We've got this going and we've got this going. Pretty soon we'll be putting stuff in these directories that need to be there. Um, and you'll see how all that will work in a second. Well, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the next chapter where we've got to know all this stuff. Okay, so we'll just grab these, this first line here and paste that in. Uh, print, stir. So... Let's run it, and there we go. Actually, there's supposed to be a space right there, so I don't know why this space didn't get copied and pasted from my copy and paste, so I'm gonna put that space in. There's supposed to be a space right there, I think, but we'll see. So the key thing is if you look at the lectures from this section, you can like look for things and you look for a pattern. And so what I want to do is I am going to look for a pattern that says, find me a colon. Okay. And I'm going to say, where is there a colon equals stir dot find. And then print out I pose. So I'm going to say, where in this string is there a colon? That's going to give me the position and offset of that. So that says that the colon is in position 18. Now, it's not always going to be 18. Sometimes these strings will be a little bit different. Okay. So the next thing I can do is I can say uh, a small piece of this string is, you, is do stir. And then um, starting from that position, I pose through the end of the string. And then we're going to print that out, print out the piece. And when I'm doing uh, string uh, parsing, tearing strings apart, 
I, I tend to have a lot of situations where I print over and over and over again. So now let's see if that piece is the right piece. And the answer is it doesn't quite look right because see, I've got that colon there. And that's because the, the it says start at 18, position 18, wherever that is, and then keep on going. And so I need to do I pose plus one. So let's see, I'll just sort of advance past this little colon character and get into that space, okay? So let's run it. So now I've got space 08475. And now I, I can just see it, value equals float of piece, because piece is a string. It's, it's a string, and then I'm gonna say print value to see if I got the value right. And, and let's remember that there's a space here. This might mess up float, I don't think it's going to mess up float because float's trying to find a floating point number and it kind of, but let's just see if it works. Let's just see if it works. Okay, so that, the key is there is it's in position, the colon's in position 18, the string we pulled out is blank 08475, and the floating point number is 0 0.8475. So we've sort of solved this. Now, I can clean this up a little bit by making that plus two, so let's just, I'll just change that to plus two. And you'll see how that changes what I'm doing. And so now this, this here is the string. That one there is the string. This is the actual floating point number. They're, they're the same thing other than the fact that it's a floating point number and you can add something to it. So I could do something like print, you know, value plus 42.0. And that would, that would actually work, right? So 42 point. And if I did print piece, plus 42.0, that will blow up, right? Because piece is a string and 42 is a float. And it says can't, can float, can't convert float object to string implicitly, okay? And so um, other than sort of taking out this extra stuff, I'm just commenting on a whole bunch of stuff here. Oops. So I take out all those print statements. These five lines are the lines to do this particular assignment where we are tearing apart a string. And in the future, the, the source, this is just so that we can play with strings, but Later, we'll be taking this data from all over the place. Finally, we're gonna start opening some files, and then later in the course, we're gonna be uh, doing opening data from databases, we'll be opening data from the internet, and so all, there's all kinds of sources of data where we get these strings, but for now, we're in chapter six, and we're only focused on strings. So I hope you found this useful, and uh, coming up soon, we'll be opening files.